Hi, welcome back. Today we have a special guest with us, Josh Moody. Josh oversees all the R&D here at 97th Floor, and what that means is he properly vets all the new innovations coming down the pipeline, which is a lot in digital landscape, and he decides what is going to work really well for us strategically, and that's what we, we build into our strategy. So welcome, Josh. Thanks, glad to be here. Awesome. So today we're going to be talking about something that is sounds super technical, mm -hmm. called TF-IDF. And my first question for you is, what is TF-IDF? It's a great question. Uh, TF-IDF stands for Term Frequency Inverse Document Frequency. So I know it's a mouthful, mm -hmm. um, but what it, what it does is it allows content creators to create their content so that it will rank very, very well in Google. Is kind of the, the too long didn't read version of TF-IDF. Perfect. Can you break that down for us just a little bit more? Absolutely. So TF-IDF, it really has two parts. The first part is the TF part, which stands for term frequency. And the second part is the IDF portion or inverse document frequency. So the first portion, the term frequency portion, um, really what that does is that largely counts the number of times a given word or phrase appears in an article. Um, so a good example of this is if I had an article, um, for example, about swimming, um, and I was to run a term frequency analysis, then I might find that my article has the word swimming in it four times. That would be a term frequency of four. So really, simply put, all it does is counts the number of times a keyword or phrase happens in an article. Okay, and we do that a lot in competitive research, right? When we're looking at other people's articles, we like to see how many times they're mentioning that, mm -hmm. as well as our stuff, because strategically that works with the algorithm of Google, right? Yeah, yeah, so TF-IDF encompasses that, um, and that's something that used to happen a lot. Um, kind of back in the day, the glory days of SEO, as some people call it, um, people would use term frequency analysis to go really hard to the paint with a given keyword. Mm. Um, but people started abusing that really bad, and then you would have people that would keyword stuff and spam their articles really, really heavily. Which Google doesn't like. Right, exactly. Because that's a bad user experience. Exactly. You might be fulfilling on the technical, what the robots are mm -hmm. crawling, but pretty bad user experience. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So it's, I mean, it, it can get you in the ballpark to understand um, your article and your subject matter a little bit better, but largely, we use it in conjunction with IDF. Because that's, that's what the IDF portion does, is the inverse document frequency portion, um, it devalues words that happen too many times. So a lot of times when you're looking at an article, and if you were just to run a, a TF report, you would see a lot of common stop words, like the or and, or other words like that, um, would be weighted improportionately. They would happen a lot more than your actual subject matter. So the IDF portion kind of flips the whole, uh, the whole formula on its head. Mm -hmm. um, so words and phrases and things that happen too many times um, get devalued. So those common stop words are devalued. And what you're left with at the end of this kind of two-part formula is you get a really clear understanding of what topics are the most important within a given article. So I know we've been talking about this on an article level, mm -hmm. um, but it's really valuable when you, you analyze a set of articles that rank for a specific keyword. Okay, so you're looking at a broader landscape. Exactly. Okay, can you give us an example mm -hmm. for all of that? Yeah, so if you were to search, again, let's go back to the swimming um, example. Perfect. If you were to search swimming in Google, you'd get a series of listings that pull up, um, typically around 10 listings. And um, what you'd use TF-IDF for is you can then analyze each one of those 10 web pages or 10 listings um, in order to understand what topics show up the most within those listings and uh, which are the most relevant to that core keyword that you searched. So the core keyword in this case would be swimming. Mm -hmm. So. How, why is this important? I mean, why with everything that we can be doing online and all SEO practices, this could be a game changer, but why? Great question. Google has used some variant of TF-IDF for quite some time now. And um, this has gained a lot of traction, particularly in other markets. So say for example, in um, SEO in like Germany, mm -hmm. um, they, they've caught a hold of this and it's been working really well. Um, so the reason it's really important is 
again, if I'm a content creator and I'm going to create content around, you know, whatever my, my topic is, I wanna make sure that I'm answering the user's question the best that I possibly can. So um, typically when companies start creating content, you'll have you know, your digital marketing teams or different people like that paired with subject matter experts to create that content. But sometimes it's easy to forget or not really be fully inclusive to you know, what that topic is, uh, it really requires. So for example, if I were to create a piece of content around swimming, I might forget a couple of different um, topics or points that I may not feel you know, subjectively that it's, it's perfectly relevant to the article, but yet four or five other articles that rank in Google do mention that. So TFIDF allows you to fully understand what people are looking for and more importantly, what Google has deemed relevant and related to that query. Okay, and so in your research, how did you properly vet this? So we know, okay, this mm -hmm. is important to Google, therefore it's important to us. Right, right, exactly. A, a great example of this um, would be if, if I'm searching the keyword or I, I wanted to create a piece of content that ranked for the keyword um, effects of caffeine, um, I might be able to think of a series of different effects of caffeine that I feel, yeah, I should put in this piece. Mm -hmm. um, but by running a TF-IDF analysis, we can conclusively say, hey, well, this, this shows up in three or four of the articles or even seven or eight of the articles out of the 10 that rank in Google. Um, Google must find that there is some you know, relevance with this in the key topic. So in this example, you know, I might think, oh, well, um, maybe increased heart rate is something that I should put in, but running a TF-IDF analysis um, might allow me to understand, hey, well, there's a lot more, maybe headache shows up a lot in those articles. And so I should have a section in my article about headaches and how caffeine relates to it. Um, another example would be, I, I guess, increased heart rate. Maybe that's something I, I didn't initially think of, but that shows up in the research. So really just helps you round out your, your articles with data so that they're perfectly relevant. Which brings peace of mind. Exactly. So anything you put resources into, like content creation, exactly, you know that it's going to be ready for Google to to deem it super relevant. Exactly. And and one misconception is people think, oh, TFIDF or any of these things are really just to to kind of game Google, but that's really not the point. The point of this is to understand the full topic so well that you're perfectly answering the user's question. Um, and really, what you're doing is you're using Google to understand that question more fully. Awesome. Do you have some resources that we could share with our, our viewers if they sure. wanted to read more? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, we can go ahead and link, we've got a really good deck here at 97th floor that kind of breaks down how to run a TF-IDF analysis, um, which is a really good resource. Um, one thing to note with term frequency analysis or a TF-IDF is it is best utilized when paired with a solid content strategy. So um, one without the other is pretty ineffective. Um, so we can go ahead and link to a good, uh, good content strategy that pairs really well with TF-IDF and will make your content unstoppable. So the, the one that I like to recommend to a lot of people um, is Brian Dean's skyscraper strategy. So it's a strategy a lot of people have used for, for quite some time and Brian Dean really popularized it. So we can link that down uh, below as well. Yeah, we'll leave that in the description box mm -hmm. below. Is there anything else that you would want to share in terms of what TF-IDF before uh, we get into maybe in another video if mm -hmm. you guys would like to know how to do TF-IDF? Is that something that you could break down for us as well? Absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. Okay, is there anything else before we get into the hows that you would want people to understand? You know, really just the importance of TF-IDF. I think that it's something that can easily be overlooked because, hey, you know, we've got a great team of content creators. I'm a great content creator or, you know, whatever the, whatever the thought process is, but it really is an important thing to bake into your content strategy. We've seen phenomenal success just by um, applying TF-IDF to some of our clients' current content to further optimize it and make sure that it's perfect for Google. Um, in that alone, we've seen phenomenal increases in rankings and, uh, and then what that traffic does, which is then convert. Awesome. So compounding results, mm -hmm. probably Swiffer results, mm -hmm. a lot of peace of mind. Absolutely. Yeah. It's something that can be done if you have a lot of content, especially if you have a lot of content. Those are easy, easy wins. It's so just applying TF-IDF to that content that you already have or 
you know, starting from ground zero, right? Where you're, you're creating your new content. Perfect. Okay, well, thank you for joining us today Absolutely. for deconstructing that. If you guys would like to know more about TFIDF, we will leave all those resources below. And if you'd like Josh to go into the house of TFIDF, as in how to actually execute TFIDF, then give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time.